We have traveled all over Kenya and East Africa to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need to improve their farms, get better yields, and become profitable farmers. We will see how farmers across the region can learn from experts and from each other in every way. Join us and our experts on this journey and share their family's experiences as they make these changes. Karibu to the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Shamba Shape Up have traveled to Kisi County where good climate keeps the land very green. But the farmers still have some problems. Agriculture in this region is a main economic activity. In the village of Engorwa in Keroka, we meet Moseti Rangondi and his son Gideon. They live on this two-acre farm with the extended family. Mr. Moseti and Gideon, how long have you been farming? Well, I've been farming for a long time. I've been farming since 1988. Farming is my business. It helps me get along, get some income to survive. What are you growing in your shamba? I used to plant maize, but then I don't know what happened. It must have been diseases. I shifted to fast growing crops. Carrots, capsicum, cabbage, tomatoes. I also have watermelons. How would you like Shamba Shepap to help you? Uh, I would like to get some knowledge. If Shamba Shepap can give me some farming techniques and advice to help me improve my farm into a business, I would be glad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mosetti has been farming for over 20 years, where he does mixed farming. He grows a mixture of vegetable crops like tomatoes, carrots, cabbages, and capsicum, and also has animals such as local chickens and cows. But unfortunately, the land sizes in KC are getting smaller and smaller. So if Mosetti and his family want to make the best out of their land, they need to improve the way they farm. And that's where Shamba Shepa with its team of experts comes in. With the changing weather, farmers need to make their farm stronger so that they can survive the hard times. This is called climate smart. And our expert John from SeaArt is here to tell us how to do that. John, how can farmers be climate smart and be able to adapt to climate change? One of the issues that uh, we have to focus on is soil. Our soil is the one which will be able to protect us and be able to give us food. One of the issues that we shall be able to focus on is really looking at climate smart agriculture practices. One of the issues which is coming up and is that is a rapid population. And rapid population is putting pressure on the land resources that we have, which are decreasing. And in terms of soil, one of it is like a soil erosion, which is washing out some of the nutrients out of the fields going down downstream and that one that cannot be used by the crop. So, what can Mosetti and Gideon here do to adapt to climate smart agriculture? The farmer can adapt to this changing climate through conservation agriculture. We are encouraging farmers to go in for crop rotation, like soybean, which has a lot of foliage. When it is dry, the farmer will only just cut out the seeds and leave all the other litter in the farm. After really harvesting, all that crop residues should be left on the farm. And also we are encouraging farmers to go in for agroforestry trees like Kaliandra. He will feed it for, life, for livestock, but use it also as a, a soil improvement and it will assist the crop tree to get the nutrients from the soil. Another option is it like a, a farmer who is practicing, who, who has livestock, he can use farmyard manure. And farmyard manure has a micronutrients, has also nitrogen, it might not be high quantities but at least, depending on the quality of the farmyard manure he has, he can use that as a resource. Which kind of manure we can use in order to improve our soil? The farmyard manure, you can use it from all. It might be cow manure, goat manure, get it even from the chicken. 
But the problem is we don't have enough. So whatever little you have, put it just in the farm. Even compost, if you have, put it in the farm. To make good manure for your shamba, collect all the farmyard manure from your animals once a week. Put the manure in a shaded place and allow it to rot. Turn the manure every month. Add fresh manure to one end of the pile so you can start using the manure from the other end. How about soil testing? We encourage farmers to take their soils for soil testing so that they understand their soils and then get the remedies for those problems. Take for example, a farmer can easily look at the symptoms in the farm and say this is what is deficient. And when the crop is still young, you will always see these leaves showing purplish color. And that is deficient in phosphorus. They have to look for mineral fertilizer, which is the phosphorus base. And this one, we have NPK, and they, they can address that. One of the issues which farmers can identify, at this young tender stage, you will always find leaves dry from outside, going inside. That is K deficiency, ammonium potassium deficiency. And from some of the fertilizers that you will be able to get out, out, out there, is called the murate of potash. You can address that if you see that problem. So it is upon the farmer first of all to take his soils or her soils for soil testing and he will know exactly what are deficient nutrients in his soils. Judging from the advice from the expert, I think the first thing we need to do is to have the soil tested. Now, consistent healthy fields don't happen just by accident on a shamba. It takes careful planning to feed the soil to get good yields. This is where the soil test is vital to the success of any shamba. Because a soil test is so important, we have asked the experts from Soil Cares to help us do one before we do anything else on this shamba. To collect a good soil sample, dig a hole one foot deep in your shamba with a soil auger or a panga. Take a handful of soil from the auger or from the side of the hole. Put the soil into a bag and take more samples from about 20 different places around the farm where the crops are grown. This should be done in a zigzag pattern. Label the bag with your name, number, size of the farm and what you want to grow. Then take it to the lab. Soil Cares has a lab which can come to your village to make it easier for you. Now we have the results. Timothy, you've taken soil samples from the shamba. You've taken them to the lab. So now what are the results? Yeah, you want to plant sweet pepper on 0.3 acres. So your soil acidity is 5.0. Not adequate for sweet pepper. You need to add agricultural lime in your field. 350 kilograms. On soil fertility, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and other micronutrients. You are low on nitrogen and potassium. Therefore, you need 28 kilograms of mare fertilizer, 17, 17, 17. Then at top dressing, you require 7 kilograms of mare CAN. Uh, looking at your soil health, how you are applying compost in your farm, you've done very well. Uh, however, you should continue doing well by adding 1.5 tons of compost in your farm every year. Finally, the best crop that can do well on your farm are carrots and any other tubers on your farm. But carrots will do the best on your farm. On the general advice, ensure that when you have weeds on your farm, ensure that you weed them before they start flowering and giving out seeds. And always use certified seeds Wherever you want to apply fertilizer on your farm, ensure that you have analyzed your soil for better results. Uh, so Gideon, do you have a question? Where can other farmers get your offices such that their farms will be tested? Uh, soil Cares has mobile testing units all over the country. And wherever you organize yourself as farmers, we come to you, analyze your soil, and give your results on the same day. So we can always talk where the farm is and where the farmers are. You don't need to come to our offices to analyze your soil. Mm -hmm. So we shall always come where you are. <laughs> so 
for a long time, Mosetti and his family have been using DAP at planting. But now we know that this has to change. We have invited Margaret from Mayor to tell us what fertilizer Mosetti should be using and when to use it. Now I saw you walking around the Shamba and from your own observations, what did you see? I made several observations. The first one, the size of the, the, of the fruits, to me, are of very poor quality. As you can see, yeah, the quality is not of standard. The main reason for that is, according to the results, after I went through the results, the levels of K were quite deficient. Uh, K is responsible for the quality and fruit formation. What is K? Potassium. Oh. So, I'm sure that's why the fruits are small in size. Another observation that I made, I observed some uh, yellowish color on leaves. Yes, we can see some of them, they have yellow leaves. For example, this one. This one is deficient in symptom for nitrogen. I've already confirmed the same from the soil results. The levels of N are too low. The, the farm has not been weeded properly. So it means there's a very high competition between the, the weeds and the, and, and the crops. So the fertilizer you applied, the nutrients available in the soil, they've already been taken by, most of them, by weeds. That's why generally the crops are not that good. What should the farmer do now? The first thing that should be done by the farmer is timely land preparation. And because from the results already the soil pH is too low, I think the farmer should start by correcting the soil pH. Lime should be applied before planting. After lime application, maybe by broadcast, make sure you do deep plowing so that the, the roots of the weed can be exposed and then because it's during the, the, the dry spell, they're going to dry up. At the onset of the rains, prepare the nursery bed and then after some around four weeks, depending on the crops, I think it should be ready for transplanting. After around three, four weeks, you will come to the farm, you make the, the planting holes, and then you, you apply fertilizer. In this particular case, what kind of fertilizer should the farmer use? According to the sale results that I have here, you should apply Mayor NPK 171717. 17, 17. Hmm. At 20 grams per planting hole. This one is around 10 grams, so make sure you apply two of this per planting hole. Then you thoroughly mix the soil with the fertilizer before you put the, the seed lint to avoid seed scorching. And then six weeks later, you should add top dressing fertilizer, which, which is CAN, the same amount. <laughs> Any question, farmers? I would like to ask you, how can farmers recognize fake fertilizers from Mauritius? Today I'm here to urge farmers that you should be very careful when purchasing some of these products. For example, when you go to the, to, to, to the, to the agro dealer, if you want Maya product, make sure it's well packed in Maya branded bags. If you just get a bag that may be white, maybe whichever color, and it's not branded, be very cautious on that. Another thing that a farmer should be very keen on you make sure you are given an official receipt when you are purchasing some of these things. It will be very easy in case you get the quality is not what you wanted. You just report to us and it will be very easy for us to trace back where you bought the fertilizer and maybe even the, the, the price and, and everything. I see you've got good information on, on smart climate. Oh yes, and what kind of fertilizers to use. Mm -hmm. And now we need to look at Mr. Musetti's record keeping mm -hmm. to make sure that his shamba is giving him profits. Yes, yes, and I'm waiting for the expert to come and check on, our, on, the, on the vegetable. Aha, uh -huh. there's still more to come right here on Shamba Shepa. Welcome back to Shamba Shepa. We are in Kisi County with our farmer Musetti. Soon we shall be finding out what the problem is with these vegetable crops. <coughs> Mosetti has been having problems with his tomatoes being attacked by a deadly moth called Tuta Absoluta. We have called on Benson, an expert with Syngenta, to tell us how to manage this pest. Benson, you've had a look at the, um, Mr. Mosetti's shamba here. What do you think? 
Okay, one of the observations which I've made around this farm is that he has been attacked by uh, a pest which we call Tuta Absoluta. And most of the farmers have been uh, actually, their farms have been cleared because of this Tuta. So how do you identify the Tuta? Uh, for the farmer to note that in his farm there is Tuta. Once he enters the farm, either in the process of scouting or wants to know what's happening with his tomatoes, he will realize uh, moths flying all over. That's one sign. The second sign, he will see the leaves are being parrowed. So once they have been parrowed, that is another sign of the tuta absoluta. Then the parrowing can extend from the leaves to the fruits. So you realize that the eggs which have hatched in the larvae, the larvae will be entering into the tomato fruits. Actually, you can see the fruit which I'm holding in my hands. So the quality of this tomato is no longer there. Even if this, uh, this tuta was eliminated from inside here, the quality of the fruit has gone down. So those are the major signs the farmer will realize. Then, once you come across a farm where the farmer did not realize that tuta had entered there, you realize the whole crop will look like it was burned. So somebody had passed there with the fire, which was not the case. So in this case, the farmer should know that that is tuta absoluta. And actually, it's better for one to control than when you are firefighting to cure. Is there a solution for it? We, Sinchenta, we have a solution to this. And the solution is to apply a chemical called Pegasus. So how does he use this chemical? A farmer will use 25 mils in 20 liters. Uh, you will spray, then you will repeat the spray after one week. Um, this chemical, once you have sprayed it, within 24, 24 hours, it will have cleared the pest from your farm. So we can now start spraying? Yes, we can. Yeah. Mr. Mseti, are you ready to spray? Yes. Yes. Pegasus is an insecticide which can be used to stop tuta absoluta in your tomatoes. Mix 25 milliliters of Pegasus in 20 liters and spray your crop. Then repeat after one week. After spraying with Pegasus for tuta absoluta, you should follow with a spray of match mixed with Dynamic. Use 25 milliliters of match and 25 milliliters of Dynamic in 20 liters. This is a double dose of the insecticide. Changing the chemical like this will stop the pest becoming resistant to the chemicals. If a pest is resistant to the chemicals that you use, you will not be able to get rid of it. The expert shows Musetti how to spray his tomatoes using protective gear and the right dosage. Record keeping for farmers is important. It can help you manage your money and work out if you are making a profit or losing money. I wanted to know if Mosetti was keeping up with his books. So, I have invited a financial expert from hand in hand to have a look at the current situation. What common mistakes do farmers make when it comes to keeping records? It's when they go to the shop, they buy the farming tools, and when they come back to their home, they don't record. They just put the receipt or they throw the receipt away and then they do the farming. At the end of the month, if they sell whatever they sell, they are not able to record anywhere. So they will never know whether they are making profit or loss. So that's very important. So we advise all the farmers, all the business people to keep record as they are key mandating every day. Gideon and Mosetti, do you keep records in your farm? Yes, yes. What type of records do you keep? The records of tomatoes, garbage, paper, and um, some passion fruits. So who keeps the records? Uh, I do keep the records. Mm -hmm. uh, ah, so you're the accountant? Yes. <laughs> okay, good. Mr. Ambua, I've seen you going through the Shamba records. Mm -hmm. Do you have any comments on what you have seen or where they can improve? I have gone through the record, the farm record, and I can see there is a track of uh, what happens in every month and in every day. 
which uh, it's a impressive record but uh, it's only one record and sometimes it's kept in a piece of paper where it can get lost any time so it's very important to have record and to buy a counter book where you'll be putting all the details of your farm and the record are important because uh, they help you uh, track the performance of your business and also they are very important because when you want to borrow money for the investment of your business you can use the record visit one of the banks around give them the record they go through the record they see how many years you have been in business what you have been doing what profit you make from the business and through that you'll be able to borrow money from them and come and invest there are three kinds of records where you need to have you can buy a query book or a counter book and uh, the first page you write uh, the cash book where you draw uh, the square because it has square where you love the money coming in and money going out in uh, money coming in is where you sell if you have your farm you have your tomatoes and you sell your tomatoes you write the date you sort and what you sort the details of that and then the amount then uh, whatever goes out it's what you purchase it may be on credit or on cash the cash book will help you by the end of the month or by the end of your your sales if you do your sales you are able to know exactly how much did you spend to invest in your business and then from there how much have you made as profit and you'll be able to uh, look at them together and you see whether you are making any progress in your business uh, you also have the second book which we call the purchase book the purchase books you record all the things you you purchase on credit or on cash so whatever you you buy from outside for working on the business any expense you do it's good you record all the purchases in your purchase book and then the third book is the sales book where you also record whatever you sell if you sell your tomatoes if you sell your milk you have to record that and it has the date the particulars is what you have sold if it's milk is the particulars and then the amount you have sold by the end of the month you'll be able to get the total of what you have made you'll also get the total of what you have purchased and you do the the, the difference then you'll see whether you are making the progress of the business do you have any question for the expert which kind of book we can use in keeping our records the three books are very important they can be put in one counter book so the cash book should be at the front and then in between you can have the purchase and then the back of your page you can have the sales uh, record there and you'll be able to carry that book when you are going even to your business and you do all the recording after you do the sales if you buy something from the shop you come and do the recording and you'll find by the end of the month your business is progressing on well. Mosetti and his children use an old lantern in his house at night. It produces a very dim light and lots of smoke, which is not good for the family. Mr. Mosetti, how much do you use on paraffin? I use about 120 shillings. So how much is that in a month? That's like 480. That's like 480. In a year? And in a year, it's 5,760. We have brought something that can save the family. That 5,760 can be used on something else. The D-Lite D20 solar home system is a personal power grid for your home. It includes a solar panel, a battery pack, which runs two hanging solar lights, two light switches, and a portable lantern. The battery also charges your phone. Installing is very easy. First, nail the solar panel on the roof. Then, connect its wires to the battery and screw the battery onto the wall. Run the lighting wires to where you want the lights to hang and screw the switches onto the wall. There are two extra sockets, so you can add two more hanging lights. And with that, her cooking and her children's studies would not be so tiring again. What a shape-up it has been! 
Mosetti and his family now have plenty of light to work, do record keeping at night, and the children can concentrate on their studies. It's now time for us to say goodbye to the family and find another promising farmer to shape up. <laughs> Shamba Shape Up is online. To learn more about today's topics or to watch any of our previous episodes, visit shambashapeup.com. Select the episode and click play. You could also visit our Facebook page, Shamba Shape Up, to get more information, get involved in discussions, and also get a chance to enter some of our great competition to win great prizes. You can also find us on Twitter at Shamba Shepa.